Williams. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. Out of the legacy of his tremendous parents yeah. uh, who paved the way, we thank God for them. Uh, we also thank the Lord for Deacon Jerry. God bless you. Good to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Allen. God bless you. Good to see you. With us in my home, uh, and I'm saying I'm not sure if she remembers me, but I I have no royalty when I see it. Uh, sister Molly, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm very familiar with your brothers, uh, Pastor Lemuel, your brother, uh, your parents. Offer our condolences as well. Your mom, uh, which was also very close to my grandparents as well. God bless you. It's good to see you. Uh, we are so grateful. Uh, I want you to know. I want you to look at somebody and tell them it's close to the end of the year. And we're still here. You don't hear what I said. I said, look at somebody and tell them it's close to the end of the year. I bless you. I bless you. And we're still here. So if there's still breath in your body, you ought to open up your mouth and give God a shout out loud. I said, if there's still breath in your body, you ought to open up your mouth. Come on, let's ask the church. Open up your mouth. Neighbor, neighbor, you're one word away, one word away from, a from a miracle. 
Look at somebody else you're one word away. Yeah, one word away. From a miracle. From a miracle. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, it is no secret that this is the season of Christmas. Uh, it is also known uh, historically in the history of the church as the season of Advent, which then precedes Christmas. Uh, as we celebrate this season, uh, we celebrate this season uh, that historically deals with the nativity, uh, in which we are chronically and celebrating uh, the life of the arrival of the promised son uh, we know as Jesus. This was a promise that had been foretold for a long time. They had been waiting, they had been anticipating, they had been believing, they had been looking, they had been seeking. And yet it had been so long it felt like it was not going to come. Unfortunately, we live in a society today that loves to commercialize everything. Uh, after Christmas, you know, uh, they will have everything up for Valentine's Day. After Valentine's Day, they'll have Easter bunnies up. After Easter bunnies, they'll have roses for Mother's Day. After Mother's Day, they're getting ready for Thanksgiving to get you back in the cycle of spending. But we must understand that the season of Christmas is a holy season for the church. It is a time in which we celebrate and we also remember the goodness of God in that he sent himself to die for us. Unlike other religions, we uh, as the people of God, as believers, are uh, in relationship with Christ. And what distinguishes us from other uh, realms of faith or other schools of thought is that they uh, reference and they look uh, for uh, their person of, of affection or the one that they seek to honor and admonish. But what distinguishes us as Christians, as the people of the way, is that the one we worship became as us and died for us, that at the end we might also be as he was. In other words, he uh, took it upon himself to die for us so that through his death we might live. And it's because of that that we have an opportunity to come to know him in the part of our sins. We have an opportunity to come to know him as our Savior and Lord. Now, the Christmas story, as we have seen it, has always been pretty commercialized. But I want to invite us into the opportunity to deal with the tension of the text on this flag. The Bible says to us in Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, uh, that there is now a visitation. Everybody say visitation. visitation. This visitation is unique. This visitation is interesting because Mary is now being visited by What are they 
found you in a place where nobody else was looking at. But I'm so glad this morning that I don't worship him because I had it all together. I worship him because he found me even when I was in the middle of my mess. I worship him not because of how powerful I sound, but I worship him because he saw me when I couldn't see myself. And what we look at this particular passage of scripture, it invites us to go to a place nobody wants to go.
Blessed are you among women. The Bible says in verse 29, but when she saw him, she was troubled because she's looking at what's going on on the inside. And I'm going to preach to somebody this morning. You know you ought to rejoice, but you got so much stuff going on on the inside. Stuff you don't tell anybody about. See, everybody thinks we tell them our business on Facebook, but there's some stuff you keep to yourself. And people have no idea what you're going through. But even in those moments, I came to remind you that God is still there. Even when you're not sure what the God is still there. Even when you're not sure what you're going to do next, God is still there. And the Bible says, look back at her and says, don't be afraid. What you're carrying is also going to carry you. You have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. Shall call the same Jesus, he will be great. Yeah. Call some of the highest Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the whole house of Jacob forever. Yeah. Now look at verse 34. I want to deal with the tension of this. How can this be? My God. Since I don't know what I'm at, since I don't know man, how can this happen wow. when I have not done anything that will allow it to be so? challenge here is that she's trying to understand how this is possible when this is not a situation she could put herself in. I want to push that for them because the last two and a half years have been challenging. The last two and a half years have been hard. The last two and a half years, her own theology, have not been easy. We've had to say farewell to people of a divine, of a disease that we never knew and so sometimes you will enter seasons in your life that do not make sense. Yeah, right. Sometimes you will go through things you have no answer for. No matter how spiritual we can be, we have no answer as to why the buildings have gone on these last two years. But what we do know is that even in this, God has not left us. But we do know that even despite the tears we shed, Change the 
God. Mm -hmm. For with God, nothing is impossible. No matter what you're going through, it's not greater than the God that's beside you. No matter what you're facing, it's not greater than the God that's beside you. And she had to come to the realization that there is indeed nothing impossible without God. But I want to look at verse 38 and I close. Notice her response. First thing we see is the reality of the text. After we see the reality, then we see the realization. But thirdly, we see the response. And notice her response. Behold the main servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And all right, what she's saying is, I might not understand this, but God, if you said it, I believe it, that settles it. I'm going to trust you. You might not have a whole bunch of people around you. This Christmas, we all 
my last time telling her I'm one word away. I'm one word away. I'm one word away. All it takes is one word from God. Turn everything around. Father, I thank you for what you've done. And what you're continuing to do. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the thanks. In Jesus' name. The doors of the church open. Oh, 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 oh,